What's the best exercise for chronic low back pain? According to science, a quick internet search will give you a bunch of different answers. Do this one strengthening exercise to strengthen this specific muscle, or do this one stretch to get rid of low back pain forever, but what does the research actually say is the most effective exercise approach for low back pain? In this video, we'll discuss this research article, which looked to answer that question. If you're looking for specific exercises to do for chronic low back pain, I'll leave some links to some videos in the description below, as this video is gonna be more of an overview of different exercise categories, like should we do strengthening, stretching, stabilization exercises, and so on, to see which one is the most effective approach. First, we have to go over a couple of definitions for how the exercises were divided in this study, as there's a little bit of overlap between the different categories. Most of us know what core strengthening exercises are. They're exercises that help strengthen the muscles around the spine, so some common exercises could include planks, side planks, bird dogs, and dead bugs. Next is general strengthening, and there can actually be elements of core strengthening involved in this category, but the focus is usually more whole body, so we can think of these exercises like squats, lunges, and deadlifts. Stretching was defined as exercises intended to elongate the tissues, so we can think of this as like the standard stretching exercises, like for the quads, for the hamstrings, and also for the back extensor muscles. Flexibility and mobilizations were the next category, which are pretty similar to stretching. However, with flexibility and mobilizations, the goal is to improve the range of motion with repeated movement. So uh, an example might be a quadruped rock or some windshield wipers. And the main difference here is the duration that these exercises are held for. So for mobilizations and flexibility, they're usually not held for very long durations, whereas stretching you're gonna be holding for a longer period of time. Functional restoration is probably a new term, and it's a technique that uses exercise to help improve someone's function. An example would be if someone is experiencing pain with transitioning from sitting to standing, they might use an exercise like a quadruped rock or a squat to help build up the tolerance to the movement so that way they can do a transition from a sit to a stand without pain. And then finally, McKenzie exercise is a system used for low back pain. And an oversimplified version of this is say if someone has low back pain with bending forward, then they would do repeated extensions to help decrease the pain with bending forward. And now that we have all the definitions for all the categories for exercises out of the way, let's see how they compared for the treatment of chronic low back pain. First, when comparing these exercises to either minimal or no treatment, all of the exercises provided some benefit when looking at both pain and improving function. So whether it was core exercises, general strengthening, or aerobic exercises, there was benefit. So as long as we include some sort of exercise into treatment, we should expect some improvement. But when looking at the top four most effective exercises for the treatment of pain, we saw that Pilates was number one, followed by McKenzie exercises, functional restoration, and then finally core strengthening. And then when looking at improving function, McKenzie exercises, flexibility mobilization exercises, and Pilates were the top three most effective exercise approaches. So looking at all this, there's a couple of interesting findings. The first is that core strengthening wasn't in the top three when we look at improving function, and this is despite the common narrative that core muscle strength is an important factor when it comes to low back pain and function. And we can make the same argument when we look at general strength training as well, because there's gonna be some elements of strength in the core with any exercise that we do. The second thing is Pilates and McKenzie being the most effective approaches for pain and function for chronic low back pain. And McKenzie is a pretty common approach in clinical practice, but Pilates really isn't. Now, there's a couple of confounding variables when we look at Pilates, such as those that participate in Pilates typically have higher socioeconomic status, as well as Pilates typically being delivered in a group setting. So there's some social elements as well that can both be factors when we look at outcomes for low back pain. And the study mentions that personal preference needs to be factored in when considering exercises for chronic low back pain. If somebody doesn't like Pilates exercises or doesn't like the McKenzie approach, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us to recommend those exercises because they're probably not going to do them. Instead, we need to pick exercises that someone's going to enjoy and they have access to. So that way they're going to be able to do it and they'll do it more frequently. And one of my final takeaways from this article was that stretching was near the bottom when looking at improvements in pain and function. And this is despite the common complaint that the low back feels tight when somebody is experiencing chronic low back pain. And this makes sense because when we look at tightness that's experienced during chronic low back pain, it doesn't actually reflect increases in muscle stiffness. So that tightness that someone is experiencing is actually more of a protective mechanism than it is the muscles becoming more stiff that's leading to the low back pain. And while there's very little downside to including stretching in a rehab program for chronic low back pain, when we look at the most effective treatment options, it's not one of the top ones. So 
in terms of priority, it's pretty low down on the list. So when looking at what the most effective exercises are for chronic low back pain, Pilates and McKenzie exercises are probably the top two. However, we need to make sure that we're picking exercise that somebody enjoys and has access to so that way they'll be able to do them. And in that case, we actually have a lot of different exercises to choose from that could be beneficial for the treatment of chronic low back pain.